So, um, and Sean's got another one out. Ooh, that's a good one. It's time! Hey, everybody, Tom Truex and Sean here, Truex Outdoor Sports, and today we're going to be talking about steelhead fishing. We're going to be talking about the tackle, uh, some tactics and a new law that's kind of come in the books here in Michigan, uh, which I think overall we think is beneficial, right? Yeah, it's beneficial to the fact that, you know, our fish of the steelhead fishing has declined and everything um, with some of the rivers and everything that we have, you know, that are prime rivers, you know, that everybody goes to, you know, so basically, you know. Well, before we get into that, before we get into the law, we're gonna talk about that after we talk about the tactics and all that stuff. So, uh, but uh, anyways, you know, I like to fish. I, I, I would consider myself an avid fisherman, but I'm not a steelhead person per se. I'm not a river fisher other than on little rivers. You guys know I like to go on that forbidden river to talk about the Little Manistee River. I'm working on it. <laughs> I like going out there and I like using little spinner baits and some ultralight there in the spring. That's my favorite kind of trout fishing. I, for some reason, I, I don't know if it's my ADD or what, but for some reason I can't stand bottom bouncing on a river and I can't stand float fishing. I, I did, you, you guys have seen the videos of me in the center pin uh, and Sean was on center pin and, and you know, float fishing, it, it, it was better than bottom bouncing, but I, I'm just not a river fishing kind of guy. Uh, we, as much as I like other stuff. Maybe we got to go to another creek, you know, a smaller stream or something. Yeah, I don't know, man. Take you there, take the center pins out there and get you out there. Maybe you'll like the smaller stream with the center pin. Yeah, I don't know. I, it's, it's weird that you can be finicky like that. Right. I don't understand why I'm that way, but I, I just am, you know. Uh, but that being said, all right, the reason why I say all that is because today we're going to highlight Sean because I would say Sean is about as close to a uh, steelhead fisherman fishing pro as you can get. And so uh, today he's well, going to talk about some of the, uh, the lures that he uses, the flies, the beads, the jigs, the, the, well, the rods, the line. Basically, every guy's, you, everything you guys need to know to be a successful steelhead fishing, uh, fish, fisherman, he's going to be trying to kind of just share his knowledge there. So, uh, Sean, take it away, man. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm, I wouldn't call myself a pro. I mean, I've been doing it for a long time. You know, I grew up in East Jordan. You know moved down here when i was eight years old so you know up there you know i don't remember catching panfish bass walleye or everything you know with everybody i remember catching salmon i remember catching steelhead and lake trout so we moved down here to say the least you know we're kept fishing lake mitchell lake Halleck, and i looked at my mom and i asked her where are these fish i'm not used to these fish mm -hmm. so um basically i'm just you know i grew up fishing salmon and steelhead in the fall. You know, I started when I was knee high to a grasshopper. Mm -hmm. I caught my first salmon when I was two years old. So, um, you know, to, just to give you guys a story, and, and it, it, it's a kind of a funny way to break the ice, I guess. Uh, my first steelhead was due to uh, Sean here. And uh, it kind of went like this. So, you know, I, I can't even really count it as my first steelhead, really. I, I think, I don't think it counts for me. You landed it. I, I did land it. Uh, so what was happening is he was out steelhead fishing. I came down because I was like, you know what? I've heard that there's some smallie in here. And so I'm going to try to catch some smallie, uh, small mouse on my bass rig and see if there's anything in. And if you guys are familiar with Tippy at all, most of you are. Uh, Tippy, there's a coffer there uh, right at the dam and you can fish above the coffer and I was fishing above the coffer. And so anyways, he's fishing below just below the coffer where it gets really water. really fast there and uh, all of a sudden he's like hey Tom come here so I, I, I'm like all right you know I put my stuff down I run over there he goes hey hold this and I grab it and sure enough there's a big old steelhead on and I think it was uh, a 12 pound 10 ounce steelhead that we ended up catching pulling yeah. out of there that was a lot of fun Man. I'll try to find the picture and I'll put it in the video here but that was my first experience catching a steelhead and and that was due to Sean and what he does here and then we we went to just before that a couple years before that we went to the Betsy River for the first time and he catch he hooks into a salmon I did catch a steelhead before that. So yes, that was you did. not my first no. steelhead. I did you catch a steelhead from, before yeah, I it, caught the salmon. Yeah, it That's was right. only it was only 10, 12 inches, but it, it was, was bigger one. than that. It no. was like a 14 inch. No. Well yeah, maybe. Yeah, you know, because it was I between it was, 10 and 14. Meter, yeah. And he caught it on spawn. Yeah. 
Um, I forgot but, all about that one. What was funny is though is he hooked into a really nice salmon. This was fun. <laughs> he hooked into a nice salmon. We had to chase the salmon down four bends at Betsy River. Like we're jumping over logs and and like I jumped over this one log and there was a hole on the other part of the log and I almost filled my wader. So that was a little crazy there. And uh, yeah, that, he that was me ninja. <laughs> that, dude, he was he was in front of me and he would like. He would like guide the, you know, I was like, don't touch the line. Cause you know, usually a line's under tension, it snaps. And so he's, he's like pushing the line underneath the log jam. I don't know how we did it, but we did it. We managed to Just make it work. Put it in the saddle right here. Yeah. You don't have to grab the line, you gently move the line. You know that? Uh, just, just I know we're going to be talking about this tackle and everything, but uh, uh, that that day though did show me that there still is honor among fishermen. Right. Uh, we got it. It got about, or we got it to where it was about half a bend. It got about away. thirty. It got about forty yards away from us. Yeah, forty or more well, yards. We, we had gotten we had gotten some ground on it because it was a, like two and a half beds away, and we got some ground on it finally. And it was about half a bend away of uh, the river, and uh, this guy had swam right, swam right under this dude's leg, and, and this dude just takes his pole, throws it up on the bank, grabs his net, and nets it for us. So I was like, hey, you know what? There's still honor among fishermen. Yeah, it was is. really cool. I want to give kudos. Guy, if you're watching this, thank you very much. That was awesome. I know it was like five years ago, but four years ago. Gosh, time flies. What was it? 20, uh, 2017, 2018. Yeah. So yeah, about four or five years My ago. My goodness. Anyways, so so kudos to you who uh, helped us net that awesome salmon there. But anyways, those are my steelhead salmon stories. <laughs> but, but so Sean, talk about um, what is, well, I guess let's talk about the tackle first that you're using, these flies and, and their well, uses. A lot of my flies I get from a local guy. He's a really good guy. He's got a master's in uh, the fisheries industry. You know, he's grew up here he's fished tippy dam the bear creek pm and all those rivers all his life and he knows what flies to tie all right so basically i buy a lot of my flies from him i also buy flies from a local bait shop called pilgrim's village in cal like everybody pretty much if you come up steelhead fishing from downstate or from north or something you know tippy or you've just been to tippy before and you've stopped at pilgrims you know where it's at in cadillac um there's also fisherman's headquarters there's pappy's yep. hank and sons there's yeah uh, and i definitely want to give a shout out to all those local bait shops because they're all excellent excellent in their own right you know, um you know pappy's I, hank and sons i believe fisherman's headquarters. i believe fisherman's headquarters just got sold to somebody new because you know i haven't been in there in, in forever because right. I just have because there was why. there was that for sale sign yeah. there and then and all of a sudden it's for gone, sale so, so I, I don't know I hope but, it got bought. yeah there's different stuff there's different beads out there there's different companies for beads they range anywhere from and i'm not joking they range anywhere from 2.99 to 7.99 um depends on which ones you get um Do, does cost matter do you think no i've used every single bead out there and i've caught um my favorite bead is this glow row peach right here mm -hmm. this one right here with a black and purple spring wiggler which matter of fact right here mm -hmm. you put the bead up top you peg it above the hook two to three fingers you put the fly below it tandem tied to the hook and i tell you what i've caught more steelhead on this setup than i have anything else so can you explain how do you rig that up that that setup using those two together so you take you got your line and everything so basically you take your line um i wish i didn't forget my line sorry <laughs> so you put the line through the bead because mm -hmm. there's a hole pre-drilled and there's pegs as a matter of fact tom if you can reach in that pocket right there right. on the tackle bag yeah that's fine these got different ones in them, so no, this has got the clear end. Okay. And there's different color pegs. You got orange and clear. That's what I basically use. Um, Does color really matter for the pegs? No, not really. Uh, unless you leave a um, peg longer than what you're supposed to, mm -hmm. then um, you use a clear one because if you use a clear one, it looks like a egg is hatching. Oh. So, because when the egg is hatching, when that baby fish is coming out of the egg, it's a clear fish. Yeah. It has no coloration, no, you know, solid. Would that egg. excite the fish more? Or? Yeah. Because they're cannibals. <laughs> yeah. Because of the movement and everything, yeah. you know, and, you know, they fight over beds, you know, that's how they get scarred up. That's how they get beat up and everything. Um, it's how their tails get messed up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, salmon and steelhead, they grow, the males, they grow a hook. 
you know, you catch them in the lake, they don't have a hook, but you catch them in the river when they're spawning, they get a hook to their mouth. Yeah. And that's strictly for fighting. Yeah. So you take a peg, you peg it onto the line, you cut the peg off, and then you put the hook um, below the peg mm -hmm. or the bead. Two to three fingers. I always and so you use, slide the bead onto the peg to keep the bead there, right? Yeah, you always right. slide the peg onto the bead oh, and, and yeah. it cinches it to the line and holds yeah. it in place. Yeah. So it's all a pressure system. Yep. And that uh, there are people that use rubber bands mm -hmm. and there are people that use um, toothpicks. Yeah. Me using a toothpick that's kind of scary because that can scar the line. I was gonna say that sounds like something that could fray the line, and yep. I want to avoid that. Yeah, scar the line, fray the line. Yeah. Um, a lot of people burn the line. Yeah, you know, there's yeah. several different sayings. Um, for me, I don't use um, fluorocarbon. I use a copolymer. Okay. Um, Maxima is a copolymer. A lot of people don't realize that. Mm -hmm. um, it has stretch, but no memory. Like unlike fluorocarbon, it has stretch and memory. Or, no, fluorocarbon has no stretch, but it has a lot of memory. Right. Yeah. So, where Maxima, which is on all my rods, um, I use High Vis and Ultra Green Maxima. I've been thinking about trying out the Chameleon, but I'm just stuck in my ways. Yeah. Um, I have no. I haven't had any issue. You know, I change it out every year. Um, sometimes twice during the fishing season. Um, two to three times, because you know sunlight, you know weather and everything. It. Depreciates your line. Oh yeah, not, absolutely. Not depreciates. So you only change it out every two years, though. Really? No, no, no. Two to three times. Two to three times a year. Okay. Uh, during the season. Okay, that makes more sense. I was like, because wait, what? You'll break off. I mean, every time you break off, when you break off your main line, you're losing a chunk of your That's main true. line. That's true. And in the so, river, you can lose a lot, a lot. <laughs> well, hence why everything on the table is considered terminal tackle. Yeah. Um. So you know we have wobble glows, which there are glow. They're solid colors. Um, and these little beads right here, some are glow, some are not. So what you do is you put two, you put a wobble glow or a corky on above the hook, just like a bead, but you peg these instead of the corky because you want this corky to move. Okay. Um, it spins. So basically it's spinning in the water, it's making noise, just like a chatterbait for a bass or a- Those bait um, or something like that. Yeah. So it's making that noise in the water, oh. so it's a reaction bite. It's an agitator? It. Yeah, it's an agitator. Okay. So, I mean, there's all you different- said tater. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> funny. Sorry. So there's all different flies, there's all different styles of flies. I mean, you can call, I mean, you can talk hours on yeah. flies, hours on beans. Now, when you're steelhead fishing, do you ever use dry flies or is it mostly a wet fly kind of situation? Well, I mean, it all depends. I mean, there's dry flies and wet flies and, you know, because you're using, so your weight is here, you got a barrel swivel and then you got your leader line. Yeah. And your leader line's always two to four pounds smaller than your main line. Okay. So you, you put your bead out and then you put your fly and then Anywhere from a half ounce, three eighths, three quarters, uh, quarter ounce pencil sinker or bell sinker, you know. I use half ounce and three eighths nine times out of 10, but you know, I do have three quarters because in the springtime, when that snow melts off tippy and that water, that water can rise. Yeah. And you know, we've seen it, um, I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've seen it above the second set of steps on the metal steps that go down to the river. Really? Oh yeah. Um, I guess 10 years ago, um, before I got back into steelhead fishing, the water was literally all the way up to the walking path and they were using one and a half, one ounce, one and a half and two ounces. And they were just, they said that's one of the best steelhead seasons they've ever had. Huh. So, I mean, and then float fishing, we got these jigs, and I mean, there's mass produced jigs, and then there's people who make jigs. Um, you guys, I mean, no, uh, not to throw it out there, but I mean, you got addicted the guys from Oregon who came here last year. They make their all their own stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. You know, they have worms, they have jigs, you know, and everything. So they came here to disprove that our steelhead were not real steelhead. 
Well, come to find out, our steelhead fight a heck of a lot harder than their ocean run steelhead. Yeah, I mean, that's that's such a mis, uh, misconception there of uh, this idea that Michigan steelhead are not real steelhead. I, I, I mean, you hear the debate all the time, you hear people talk about it, but most of the people talking about it are the people from Oregon, Washington, Since, those areas yep. that are like, oh, we're, we're better. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, you know, I've, I fished the Michigan steelhead, and there they are. They're, they're, they're the same stinking fish, it's just ours happen to hang out in cold uh, lake water, well, fresh water. Here's the thing, a uh, little history on steelhead, rainbow trout, and stuff like that. Michigan has only got two natural trout in the whole state. Mm -hmm. That's lake trout and brook trout. Mm -hmm. Brown trout are European fish. Yep. They come there. You got the German and you got the English or whatever, you know, yep. British. Um, and then they got funky teeth. Yeah. I mean, they taste good too. <laughs> and they're beautiful fish. Don't get me wrong. They are a beautiful fish. Um, I got one. I got a German one up on my wall that uh, a couple years ago I got out of the uh, out of Tippy during the salmon run. Uh -huh. um, it was uh, 13 pounds and 24 inches. It was a female, I was going to throw her back until I realized that she had taken both my flies into her gills and if I would have let her go, she was going to die. Yeah. So why not put her up on my wall where she's sure. honored and Absolutely. respected? You know, she I gets, mean, if you gill the fish, it's just going to die anyway, so you might as well at that point. Right, right. I mean, it doesn't matter if you hit one gill or two gills no. or all the gills. You're, it, that Especially fish, with trout. Cause that, like, I, got, I remember I got yelled at because I didn't like wet my hand properly before I touched the trout. So if they're that fragile, which I believe they are, yeah, they if are. they're that fragile, I mean, you're, you gill the fish, it's done. So you might as well absolutely put it on the wall for sure. Well, I mean, they have, they have the oil and everything on them yeah. to keep them, you know, from protected and everything, and then um, their scales, they're a soft scale fish. Mm -hmm. They're not a hard scale like walleye, yeah. bass, pike, you know, panfish. Um, but the beads, you know, like I said, there's so many different companies. Um, so I buy um, Great Lakes Steelhead beads. I buy, um, there's, oh God, I've got so many different companies, I don't even remember the names of them all. So, um, all right, but, so but the beads is really an attractor, right? That's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. So basically, what it is is the bead is imitates a floating egg off a bed. Mm -hmm. So the steelhead come in right after the salmon. They're eating the salmon eggs that are floating off. So they're after food. You know, people say salmon and steelhead don't feed when they're spawning. That is a myth. Oh. How are they going to? swim so many miles and so hard up a river, why would they go after flies? Why would they go after beads? Yeah, you know, yeah. they're feeding. So So and, and then like what and like what you were saying, so you've got your uh your sinker, barrel swivel, yep. um long leader, it's two pound test lower than your main line. Two to four, yeah. And then you've got your you you would put your bead generally and then the hook below that, right? It's never Yeah, you, you never got the, the hook, bead. yeah, you got the hook below the bead. You don't put the bead right on the hook, right? Because no. I think that's what, a lot of people make that mistake is that when I first started uh ever ever going out salmon fish just on my own it was always, you know, I'm just putting the thing on the hook like I do, you know, for a bluegill. Well, there are beads that you can put right on the hook, like these soft beads right here and the soft beads but that, but that's usually to you right that, there. That would be usually when you're running yep, like those uh, ones. I mean, if you feel those soft yeah, and yeah. everything, they're like a miniature egg. Um, some of those are, uh, those are made in Michigan. They're uh, called uh, steelhead candy. Yeah, but you, but I mean, you do that when you're running a two bead kind of situation, right? Because you're still gonna have that bead above the hook. Well, no, no, no. no. Okay. These you can run separate with just a single bead, and then you can tie line tandem to yeah. your hook to the, uh, you know, the elbow of your hook, mm -hmm. and you tie another line which is two feet short, anywhere from eighteen inches to twenty four inches, mm -hmm. and that's shorter than your main okay. uh, leader line. Yeah. So you you can run. There's people who run. I don't know why eight to ten foot you know the saying is is run a liter longer than that's about as long as your rod okay but I don't sometimes I do by accident or? sometimes I do by accident sometimes but then again I try to run a leader line my main leader line is from 
the very tip of my middle finger all the way up to my shoulder. Mm -hmm. And then my short, and then my bottom leader line is from my elbow to, and that gives me so you run six. significantly shorter than a lot of guys do. Sometimes, yeah. But I would say, guys, just so you know, Sean catches fish. <laughs> so I'm going to throw that out there. Like, especially you guys watching this, oh, I do it this way, and it's always this long. And he catches fish. The, foot, the proof is in the pudding a little bit here. So Yeah, I mean. Um, and we'll throw, we'll throw up some pictures of, I've of got, fish that Sean has caught in the past. Yeah, so. this year a buddy of mine actually hooked into one that was uh, a big salmon, 43 inches, and it was like 35 pounds, and we hooked it together. That was above the coffer, and that's where I use braid. I don't normally use braid. You know this. Yeah. Um, unless it's on my bait caster. Mm -hmm. um, but normally, if I'm fishing below the coffer, I'm using my copolymer line. Just for the fact that it breaks down in the water mm -hmm. where braid does not. Yeah. So, you know, we get people fishing down below the coffer and they cut their braid, you know, just use their scissors. But if we get a fish, that braid is going to cut our line and yeah. it takes us off. Yeah, yeah, I get it, I get it. So, so we've talked about beads, and I think we've got a general idea on that. If you guys, by the way, have any questions, make sure you comment in the in the YouTube channel, or, or not in the YouTube channel, but in the, yeah, uh, in than... the video. And Sean or myself will answer those questions uh, in the comment section. So feel free to comment and ask questions, because we are totally cool with and answering I questions. And I have taught, I don't know, um, I have taught a lot of people how to salmon fish. I've taught a lot of people how to steel fish, steel fish fish. Uh, a couple years ago, I taught um, this guy and his brother, both in their 60s. They're steelhead fishermen, but they've never fished for salmon. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's just like fishing for steelhead. You're yeah. using the same tackle, you're using the same te techniques and everything. Uh, just with, when you're running a center pin, you want a heavier duty your rod, and you want heavier line and everything. But for me, I can take out my ultra green, uh, um, they're in the red sleeves right there as you guys can see, Those, that's my green uh, line. So I take my ultra green and I don't use anything over 12 pound tests. Mm -hmm. And I land 25 and 30 pound fish yeah. on 12, you've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen it. I, I landed one because I was using it. Um, um, yeah, so um, before we go into the rods and, and line too much further, let's talk about jigs real quick. Okay, so the jigs, um, basically, um, you got, bring them up here so you guys can see real close. Yeah, we can actually bring it closer here. To yeah. The, the camera there, just so you guys can see. Hopefully you guys can see that in there. And Tom will probably take a picture of this. To, so you got the marabou jigs. You got the marabou jigs, which you don't need to put nothing on. Some people will put a waxy or a piece of shrimp. And it's funny how, you know, for add like, a little flavor. Add a little flavor, and it's really funny because you can use in Michigan. We don't have wild shrimp in our lakes. We, I mean, we do have freshwater shrimp, but they're so tiny that you can barely see them, and they're not worth eating. Yeah. But um, all you got to do is just tie that on, and that's about one eighth ounce, I believe, if I remember correctly, because I got this. I got a couple of these from Myers, and then. A buddy of mine, um, right here. This one was handmade. Um, it's you know it has a lot to do with the flash and you know shiny stuff. It's just like a raccoon, you know. They see something shiny. You, you got sidetracked there. You were talking about shrimp. Oh, well, so the <laughs> shrimp, um, ocean. You know, yeah. they're an ocean uh, animal. So we don't have it in Lake Michigan and everything. You know, we got plankton, but we don't have shrimp but yeah it's one of their favorite foods and it's like almost ingrained after thousands of years in their head hey that's food mm -hmm. and you know i've caught i caught a really nice steelhead so you're saying is they're, they're using shrimp out in our freshwater rivers to catch these things yeah just like you would you know in oregon washington whatever yep yep but they use raw shrimp where we use you know cooked shrimp you okay. know the ones that peel you know you don't have to peel and eat them but mm -hmm. i mean i'm not touching raw shrimp why not? Well, it's not, I'm not going to touch it. It's that it will degrade too fast. Oh, where yeah. The cooked shrimp won't. That's true. The cooked shrimp does stay, stay along a while. And so, if you get really hungry, you know, you just pop in your mouth. All right. <laughs> Unless you're like my one buddy who has a boat and he's a charter guide. He don't like shrimp because it's a bottom feeder. Oh. 
we've had conversations with Brad, by the way, uh, <laughs> about bottom feeders. And hey, 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 yeah, he don't, he don't eat bacon, uh, he don't eat shrimp, uh, he won't eat tilapia. That's all right, that's all right, but, you know. In, in my opinion, every, and, and I, I know this to be true, I've caught every single fish on the bottom at one point. Right. Okay, there ain't a fish alive that I haven't caught eating something from the bottom. So the truth is, all fish are, are bottom feeders. You hear us, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love you. We love you, Captain Brad at Michigan Guide Service. Uh, so, anyways, jigs. 90% um, of my jigs in here, they're all handmade by a guy. Um, he's uh, He lives here in Michigan. Um, you hear me talking about him. I've fished with him before. Um, but I do have some store-bought jigs. They're the jamming jigs. You know, everybody knows the jamming jigs. People use them during ice fishing season. They use them for trout and stuff, crappie. But I mean, like he just—I mean, he's got so many. It's so hard to just hit. I mean, different colors. These ones. The reason why I have so many of the Wonder Bread and Wonder Mess is because these are hitters. Mm. Whether it's got a piece of shrimp on them, a micro pink worm, which I don't have any with me, I believe. Now, Wonder Bread and Wonder Hitters are from Jib's no, Jigs, right? Yep, yeah, these are Jib's Jigs. Well, no, I call them Wonder Hitters. Oh, okay. But this is the Wonder Bread. Um, it's got the colorations of Wonder, Wonder Bread, the wrapping of the Wonder Bread bread. Yeah. Hence why it's, and then Wonder Mess. A Wonder Mess. Yep, yeah, Wonder Mess, which the only difference is, is it's literally a mess of paint. Yeah. It's not... I've caught fish with these ones also, so I can kind of vouch for them. So, I mean, we got Sunset, Sunrise, Candy Corn, like Pink Glow Zebra. Like, he makes glow-in-the-dark ones, he makes solid-colored ones, and I've caught fish on every single jig in here. Every single color of jig that I have in here, I've... And he comes out with new variations every year. Yeah, so I mean, he's a really good guy. I mean, I fished with him a couple times. Um, he's got uh, he's got his own Instagram channel. He's got you know Facebook and everything, and he's got his own website. I mean, it's, it's Jibs Jig, right? Yep, Jibs J I B B S Jigs dot com. Cool. So I mean, great guy. Um, he does everything literally in. He's a one man show. Um, he does everything in his garage and everything. So awesome. Um, and then, you know, we just, of course, you know, got to have the trusty old uh, weigher. You always want to know, you know, if you get that one big fish, you want to know how much you You weigh. do, you do. Um, and then, you know, got your stringers. Everybody knows stringers. Uh, I did have a question for terminal tackle-wise. Um, in... When, when a lot of us fishermen were bass fishermen or pike fishermen and everything, and in most of the fishing world, the size of the fish, you're going to use a bigger hook. Not but that's always. not the case with a steelhead, right? That's not the case with any fish, honestly. Um, I've caught, I've, I, I mean, I've caught... We can beg, beg to differ on a pike and bass for that. I, I, yes and no, because, you know, I was using a Rapala lure that had a three hook, you know, yeah, yeah. solid lure. And I caught... A little bluegill. Well, I, like I know that. that can happen, but that's generally not the rule. But what I'm saying is, with steelhead, you use a smaller hook, right? Yes. Yeah, what I mean, size hook are you usually using for steelhead? A size hook. I'm using usually if I'm throwing a bead. It depends on what size bead too, because there's ten meter, there's eight millimeter, ten millimeter, six millimeter beads. Okay. I don't go any smaller than a six millimeter, and I don't go any bigger than a ten millimeter. It's just what I like. And it's what's worked for me mm. over the years. But so I mean, literally. You're not using anything. I mean, what what is that? Like a number six? That is three. Yeah, that's about it. That's a number six. Yeah. And then you know I got my red hooks that I like to use, and a number four. Number four. So like, and then so like a three twos. and four. Yeah, yeah. Twos, fours, and sixes. That's okay. all I use, and it depends on what size bead I'm using. It depends. You know. Sometimes I'll use a bigger hook with a smaller bead. Sometimes I'll use a smaller hook with a bigger bead. It just depends on what's working that day. I will make a side note with the whole red hook thing. Um, you may or may not believe it, but I, when I'm fishing and I'm saying, like, let's let's translate that to bass. If I'm bass fishing and I'm throwing a wacky rig, wacky rigged stick worm, I'm using a red hook. I don't know why, but I can vouch that. 
I would say that I just get more hits using a red hook. You know, I think they think it's blood. I don't know. The science isn't totally there. A lot of people say that it's kind of uh, uh, voodoo kind of thinking, you know. But right. blood, I mean, I've caught a lot. I've caught more fish on my red hooks than I have on my, you know. It seems to be the case. It does. It really does. So I'm totally going to make a vouch and a, and a, a vouch for red right. hooks on that. Cause when, I'm using, when I'm using my soft beads, that's all I use is my number fours and my, num my number sixes and my number four red hooks. Okay. Um. Now, you know, for, you know, reason why we run a tandem setup though, mm -hmm. let's get into that, is because if you're running a single bead or a single fly, that weight in that barrel swivel holds it down. Mm -hmm. But if you run a double fly, double bead, double bead, a bead fly type deal, what that does is that second bead or that second fly holds that first one closer to the weight up and the water. Oh, wow, there you go, yeah. So basically what you're doing is you got one way up here, you got one down here, and your weight is down here. So, I mean. So it kind of keeps it more in the fish's realm, you know, yep. instead of being directly on the bottom. And you got to, you know, and that helps, helps, you know, weight. Weight is a big deal. Yeah. Um, Say, uh, actually, if I look at my phone, I don't know if I got service. I can look up the uh, USGS. Oh, I'm offline. Nope, I'm not. Okay, so so basically, what we do is a lot of us we go on to the USGS website for the Manistee River. So USGS Manistee River. Wait for it. See, mine's already highlighted due to the fact I look at it all the time. And so basically what we're doing is we're looking at the oxygen level, we're looking at the water flow, we're looking at the temp. Actually, we should go fishing. <laughs> I, I ain't joking. You can go fishing. I, I ain't joking. We should actually go fishing because the water level is up almost 2,500. Uh, um, well, there's a ton of water uh, melt off right now. Yeah. Snow. So right now, um, because of the snow melt off and the water runoff and everything, that water is going to be dirty. So you want to use brighter colors. You want to use a bright bead with a dark fly. Mm -hmm. uh, with this warm up that we've had, um, there are stone flies that are hatching. So you want to use something similar like to a spring wiggler or a stone fly because that's like one of their favorite foods when it's in the water. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, the water's up. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm going fishing tomorrow, as a matter of fact. There you go. Uh, I'm gonna, um, so, but um, hopefully it stays up. I'm going to see the oxygen level, gauge height in feet, 9.21 feet. That's, so basically what that's telling me is the water coming over the coffer. Um, so the speed of the water coming over the coffer because there's a USGS box, you've seen it. Uh, mm -hmm. it's a, it looks like a little little portage on or a deer shack. Um, that's how they've managed the flow of the water and everything and you know. So what it does is it measures the water continuous and it will tell you how fast the water's flowing and everything so. And then that dictates the amount of weight you want to use, right? You're, yeah, so right now tw at 2450, you want to use a heavier weight, so half ounce to five eighths. And you're using pencil sinkers or egg sinkers? I'm using pen I use pencil sinkers and I use bell sinkers. Um, mostly the bell sinkers I use above the coffer just for the fact that um, it has a little bit more um, surface area, uh -huh. so it holds it down more. But um, right now, with the way the water flow is right now, you want to use a probably a five eighths above the, because that's going to push that half ounce right over the coffer. Yeah. You know, um, it's really fun when you get a fish up on up there and it goes over the coffer. <laughs> then really, you're running. <laughs> yeah, you're running. Uh, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. But that's how fishing is. You know, if you know, if you fish all the time, you know that's how it is. You know, it's just like deer hunting or turkey hunting. You're not guaranteed that fish. That's true. You're not. I think that's another reason why I have a hard time when it comes to steelhead fishing because you have to really have that patience and that desire for the fish um, that I just find, find that I often don't have. Because like for me, I, I, if I go to a spot when I'm on a lake and I'm bass fishing, if I haven't caught a fish in you know 10 minutes, there's not a fish there. Whereas river fishing, you know, you're, you're doing a thousand casts, same exact spot, 
and thousand and one and boom there's a fish you know so that i think that's another thing that my add kind of wigs out with it's mm -hmm. like eh, you know i get bored real easy <laughs> well, 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 well here's the thing when the fish are in it's like you can't keep the line in the water that's true that is i'll give you that um when you lived over here off of the main road off of uh 55 right here mm -hmm. and everything and i was staying at your place and you know i had that really bad day i said hey i'm not coming back i'm gonna stay here and fish all day yeah but i was like 2018 2019 something like that so i stayed um you know i caught you know i was i was here for what a week mm -hmm. So I got here what Thursday. Um, I caught two Thursday. I caught one Friday. I didn't catch none that Saturday because we had that really heavy warm up that mm -hmm. weekend in April. That very first weekend of April, we had 70, 75 degrees that first weekend of April. But I don't know what it was, but from Sunday morning to Tuesday, Wednesday afternoon when I left, I guarantee i and this is no exaggeration i probably hooked in over 700 fish wow 700 fish i mean you you heard me when i came back my voice was hoarse yeah because that was me screaming fish on or fish coming down because if you get a fish on and you're above a lot of people you got to yell that crap i'm sorry but you do um because that tells people that there's a fish coming down get their lines out of the water so let's move on and uh, we've talked about sinkers, weights, we've talked the about different kinds bees, of flies. We've there's so many jigs. different flies. I mean, we could we could go days on yeah, flies, yeah. Well, hours. Well, we've touched on kind of setups and everything with that. So let's uh, let's get to rods. Let's talk about one of each one. And uh, All right, so. then we'll talk about new rule. So when you guys heard me talk about the uh, my ultra green, um, this is my ultra green, one of my ultra green rods. Um, I actually, a lot of people make fun of me, especially Brad, because I leave my plastic on the bottom piece. There's a reason why I leave the plastic on my bottom piece, because if I want to ever upgrade my rods, I can't. And because this cork right here will be really nice still. So also another reason is, is I take a piece of masking tape and I put, the poundage of test line that I have on my reel. Mm. So I know. That's a cool pro tip. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many people do it, but it's just something I do just because, you know, if I want to use a lighter line, if I know the fish aren't, the fish are being skittish, I go to one of my rods that have a lighter line. Um, this is a Fenwick HMX, 10 foot six. I love them. Length of rod is important, right? Yes, yes. Length of rod is important. Um, nine foot is a good length for somebody who's shorter and everything you know because but what it does is the longer the rod the lighter the line you can use if i really really wanted to and i wanted to tick people off i could take this rod take this line off put four pound test and use a two pound leader and catch salmon and steel at all yeah because it, the longer your rod the more the rod does the work yep, the backbone the line yeah the backbone yeah. so um, Fluger President 40s, um, they, to me, they're the best reel for the money. Um, <laughs> hey. I'm kidding. Hey, how many fish have you seen? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so it's just there, a funny. It's kind of like the Ford Chevy debate, okay? It's yeah, a funny thing. Right. I don't really care. So, <laughs> this reel is, depending on where you go and depending on the uh, ship or the person the company that the bait shop gets it from or the store gets it from is anywhere from 50 to 69.99 49.99 to 69.99 mm -hmm. um that's the original presidents um i don't mess with um anything higher end just because they're a good reel. I mean, if they, they work at that they, price point, why mess with the higher end stuff? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, there's. I mean, we're fishing on a budget here, okay? I don't know if you guys know this, but we don't have any sponsors or anything. We're just doing this uh, for ourselves. Not just that, I'm a disabled veteran on a fixed income. I take care of my mom and everything. Yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, $100 rod, $60 reel, you can't beat it. Yeah. I mean, you've seen the fish I've caught on these rods. Um, these none of these are my original rod unfortunately she broke she's retired she's sitting in my shed she ain't going nowhere the cork handle right here is all worn down from me holding it up there and and these are the michigan handles which i absolutely love just for the fact that 
there's the balance. And then I got my center pin rods. Um, you guys seen our one video about center pin fishing. I don't use a really expensive center pin reel, even though some people will say this one is expensive. Just what's nice is it comes with a dust cover, you know, Raven, or not Raven Bobbers, but yeah, Raven Bobbers, sorry. This one's 15 gram. And I got three number fours split shot that are non-removable. Um, line cinch, Akuma Venta 2 uh, from, yeah, Akuma? Yep, Akuma Venta 2. Caught a lot of fish, Any little ones, big ones, you know. 2020, we lost uh, we lost our right to fish the shoreline due to the pandemic because people were coming from out of state, you know, steelhead or you know, steelhead crazy, being jerks to the DNR, DNR and everything. We lost our right to fish from shore. So for that for, time. for that time being, I mean, we we can go now. They didn't do it last year because they lost. They realized, oh wait, we lost a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, they did. They lost millions. Money talks. So I go out with my buddy on his boat. Um, some of the fish pictures you'll see, um, there'll be me fishing with the center pen. That's actually my newest one. Um, that was actually a replacement rod because my pooch decided to eat one of my other rods. Huh. Hopefully so, she's not eating my burger back in there. No, hopefully not. If she is, she's in trouble. And then... I got these rods. Like I said, every rod back here is a Fenwick HMX. Um, that one, sorry, I forgot to say the size. These are the 12 sixes, almost 13 feet, which is really good for- And you need that for center pin because you got this little tiny thing that you're using to, well, I mean, to get, reel with. The, there's Danny Coville, there's Raven, there's uh, Blood Run and everything. You know, There's all different types of center pins. I'm waiting for a Fluger to come out with one so there I can go. get Fluger. So, I mean, all right, so this is pretty, that, that we pretty much walked through uh, our uh, tackle, you know, the, the jigs, the weight, the beads, uh, how you how you put those on with um, the um, pegs and, and everything. And we'll get a better video, you know, we'll get. We'll, we'll kind of show you how rigging and everything. Yeah. Um, we talked about the rods and reels. So, finally to the point in the video that a lot of people probably are tuning in for, uh, explain this new rule as, as, as you know it. Okay, as I know it, um, it came out about, it's been in the works for a while now from what I've read up and everything on it. So basically um, our steelhead have declined in the mm -hmm. last 10 years by over 500,000 fish. Wow. Um, honestly, I think, to, I like to think that, honestly, I have this gut feeling, honestly, not think, I have this gut feeling that we're losing our steelhead due to the fact that we got all these millionaires, you know, these new millionaires, you know, that are winning the lottery, and, you know, these young millionaires come, you know, from Bitcoin and everything uh -huh. that have bought property along the Lake, Lake Michigan shoreline and they're putting chemicals into their grass to keep their grass nice and green, uh -huh. their trees nice and pretty. But they don't realize is those chemicals are draining off into our lakes, killing our plankton, killing our algae. And so it's a theory. Yeah, two thousand. Uh, they say from since two thousand eleven to now, we have lost over five hundred thousand steelhead. Wow. In our fisheries, um, and they've only limited it from, and it start. It goes into effect, uh, I believe, January 9th. Um. So. So what uh, is it? So basically what it is, is March 15th to May 15th, which is the basically the time that steelhead are actually spawning, spawning. They're physically spawning. They're, they're milking and dropping eggs and everything. Uh, from March 15th to May 15th, you're only allowed one fish over 15 inches. One, one fish per, per time out or per, one fish for the whole season? Well, per day. Oh. Per day. You know, yep. So say you go out at two to noon on one day you literally have to wait till midnight to go back out to fish so you can't even keep fishing after you you can fish you or? can yes you can still keep fishing you can do catch and release okay. but if you go if you want to keep more fish you have to wait till midnight to keep more fish okay 
it, uh, it but, really, but it's it's just a short amount of time. You know, March fifteenth to May fifteenth. I mean, it's you got two months. Two I months. Mean, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because that's unlike salmon, our steelhead don't die off. They go back out to the lake and they come back in every year to spawn. Mm -hmm. um, so 2018 was a really good year. 2019 was a good year. It was a little slower. 2020, it was a good year until they closed the river down. But I'm think I'm saying this coming year, 2022, because they, it's going to be phenomenal. Yeah, and and I guarantee. The DNR are going to give out some major receipts this year just because people aren't going to follow that regulation and they're going to be stupid about it. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, a lot of people but, feel really entitled about, you know, well, it's mine. I've been doing this for living off of these fish for years and years and yeah. years. But bottom line, you know. If you go right now to March 15th, you can keep your limit of three fish. That's true. Three over 15 inches. That law does not go into effect until January 9th, I believe. It's all online. But you it's not it effective until March 15th, right? Right. So. It's not effective until March 15th when the walleye close. So, I mean, one thing to think about this, guys, is that it's a small thing that we can do that might help. Will it solve all the problems? Probably not. But will it help? Will it help you our know, fishery? Have our fishery to have un uh, less pressure during, uh, like, a really important time? I, you know, I, I think that it. I, I personally think that it would be helpful, not so, not being a steelhead fisherman, but um, you know, the only thing that I was wondering is, it was, or that worries me is, you know, the bigger the fish are, the the more of a breeder fish they are, and I do I do worry that during that time, guys might be tempted to take those bigger fish, uh, so they have to have more. But I'm good with a. 12 pound or 15 pound fish 10 to 15 pound fish because oh, yeah those are the good eaters those yeah, are really sure. the good eaters um i have to find it now the manistee river from tippy dam to the railroad bridge by it's the launch campground it is where that uh law goes into effect so past the railroad bridge to manistee lake out to lake michigan you can still keep three steelhead really yep well they're not spawning in there so no they're sense. not yeah no um, Bear Creek waterways, you're only, only allowed one fish. The Pure Marquette. Well, they have really spawn in there. Pure Marquette is the one of the few rivers in the state of Michigan that has a natural spawning. Um, because uh, they don't plant the Pure Marquette mm -hmm. at all for salmon or steelhead. Which is incredible, the fact that. There they, is such good steelhead fishing in the Pier Marquette. Right, and, and salmon fishing. Yeah, just yeah. for the fact that, you know, it's, they naturally spawn. They've actually adapted to those rivers and have naturally spawned. Um, and then there's uh, the Carp River up in uh, the UP by Marquette. Um, the Muskegon River from Croken Dam down to M20, I think it is, or something like that. If you go online, you can look up, you know, Michigan steelhead uh, limitations, and it, it should pop right up. Yeah, basically, I've been doing it since I was two years old. You know, I started out float fishing. Literally, what I, you know, how I was raised is we actually took a piece of styrofoam, put it on our put it on our line and pegged it on there. We didn't use actual bobbers, we used styrofoam. Mm -hmm. And if that styrofoam started moving, we hooked the fish. Just let our rods lay on the city dock there in East Jordan, you know, caught, so. Yeah. Well guys, uh, there you have it. And hopefully you learned something. Hopefully there's been some good information here for you. And the thing is, we are totally cool with taking our, our subscribers out with us. So if you want to be in a video and come do what we do and come do it with us, totally excited for that. We want to make new friends. We enjoy making new friends to do this with. So yeah, uh, reach out. Feel free to reach out. You can reach out. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. You can yep, uh, we'll reach out to Sean on Instagram. You can reach out to Sean on Facebook, me on Facebook. You can uh, get a hold of us through our email, uh, through the website and everything. Um, feel free to reach out because we'd love to have you on the channel. It just makes more content anyways. Yep. My Instagram is OIF06 Outdoorsman. So I mean, no. So, anyways, uh, you'll see all my pictures, my hunting and fishing videos, and every pictures on yeah. air. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, and we do post a lot of pictures out there. So, 
All that being said, we hope you enjoyed today's video. Hopefully it was uh, entertaining and uh, you learned something. And until next time, God bless you.